Welcome to Sunday Night Prime. I'm Father Andrew Apostoli, a member of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and I'm delighted to be your host for today's program, which I'm sure you're going to find very, very interesting. Uh, before we get into the program, I'd like to announce that if you have any questions, comments, even suggestions for programs that you would like to see on Sunday Night Prime, please uh, send your emails to sundaynightprime at ewtn.com. Okay, I repeat that, Sunday Night Prime at EWTN.com. Well, you know, tonight's program has an unusual title to it. It's called The Monks of My Ross. You know, many times when I go around, I give good talks. I gave talks in schools for years, and you had been a priest for over 45 years now, and giving talks in schools in different places. People uh, may come up to me and ask, are you a monk? And, uh, of course, St. Francis did not call his followers monks. Monks were living in monasteries and usually somewhat secluded and set off from the, uh, from the people, uh, you know, big monasteries that they would have oftentimes. But St. Francis called us friars because he said, your monastery is the world. But what connected us was being brothers, and that's what the word friar meant, you know, brother. So that was our common bond. But, you know, sometimes the name monk sticks, and it did for some of our friars in Ireland. And tonight we're going to have a program, as I say, it's entitled The Monks of My Ross. And I'm so happy to have as the guest tonight, the special guest, two of my own brothers in religious life, two of my Franciscan brothers, and that is we have uh, Brother Gabriel Joseph, who is uh, just ordained a deacon and re-entering yeah. fourth year. Thank you, Father. Good yes. to be here. That's yeah. going to be your big year, too. Coming. Yeah. <laughs> and we have also Brother Bernardino Maria, who's going Hello, into second year. It's, it's wonderful having you here. Well, they look at all these beards. Huh? You know, they <laughs> must think we don't have any razors at our <laughs> house there. But now, a beard was, uh, by the way, from the days of the Capuchins. I was a Capuchin for a number of years. But the Capuchin Franciscans were one of the few orders in the church for centuries that had beards imitating Christ and St. Francis, you know, and it kind of also a sign of re rejecting the world, uh, so to speak, and um, living a little more rough, austere uh, kind of uh, life. Um, so I'm very happy to have two of my, we call them confrères, our, you know, brothers in religious life. Well, brothers, you were two of the monks of my Ross, and I know you've got a lot <laughs> to share about the mission there that uh, opened in Ireland in August of 2007. You, can you, uh, Brother Gabriel, I think you were there first before Brother Bernardino was there. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about, if you, you know, what you know about the beginning and so on. Sure. Well, um, early on, um, some of the history of us pre preceding us coming there was about uh, doing missions in Ireland for a while. Some of the friars were involved in doing some missions throughout the country going to different parishes and really really successful and I'm not sure how the bishop in Limerick directly heard about us but he was one of the bishops that invited us to come and establish a friary in his diocese and uh, other uh, dioceses in the country as well uh, the bishop up in Derry wanted us to come and um, so there was a lot of discussion about where we should come and where we should go and really contribute to the renewal of the church there mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, which are very, very important. I was part of that the preaching, mm. uh, you know, time that it was. I enjoyed it so much, you know. Found that people were wonderful, you know. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, so Limerick, huh, that's more to where in, in regard to the country south, is it more? Uh, it would be in the west of Ireland, in the southwest Ireland, uh, and Limerick City is right on the border of Clare. So they have the Clare Hills and behind us, famous for its Irish music in Clare and. Um, but we're tucked away right on the Shannon River, so we're right close to the one of the main airports there and just heading out. If you go a little bit further west, you're out in Kerry country and beautiful uh, Dingle Peninsula and just a beautiful place to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I remember a couple of my visits there to Ireland. It was very, very beautiful. So, there, yeah. so, so Limerick was the city, but we were in a section, a special section, right? Yeah, well... well mm -hmm. Yeah, th it was called, uh, the city of Limerick has a number of different neighborhoods and they all have different titles, but we were in one of the suburbs called My Ross, and that was a kind of a, a special housing establishment that the city had, had put up, 
and uh, at one point it housed 5,500 people. And the bishop wanted us to come and really minister to the people that were there. The, unfortunately, there was a lot of violence that was taking over the, the city in general. Limerick was, had a bad reputation for violence, a lot of, um, yeah, just violence and gang-related violence and families that were feuding and um, very difficult scene and a lot of unrest. And the bishop was concerned about his people Mm -hmm. uh, living in that environment and wanted us to come and be a source of peace, a sign of God's love in the midst of that, mm -hmm. that violence. So, mm -hmm. I remember the first time I heard about Limerick, I heard it was called Stab City. And I said, well, that's a, <laughs> that'll yeah. tell you a lot right <laughs> there, huh? You know, and I know yeah. shootings and all sure. of that, drugs then later. Huh? Yeah, came yeah, in there was there. a lot of, mm -hmm. yeah, that was all part of it. So everything you can imagine about maybe the South Bronx was about 20 or 30 years ago. Limerick mm -hmm. had all of that, which is kind of surprising. You wouldn't think that in your kind of sense of Ireland, but, you know, it yeah. touches there as well. So, sure. Yeah. I guess yeah. wherever human nature is, we're wounded by original sin and yeah. personal yeah. sins and struggles, you know. Yeah. And then, and Brother Vernon, you, you went over there too, didn't you? And, I was, uh, Father, yes. You know, I, um, how long were you at the, at, at my Ross? At my Ross? I was there for a little over a year, a year and two months. Um, I was sent there in 2011 through tw 2012. And uh, it really was a great blessing for me to be there. I remember talking to Brother Gabriel on the phone. And, uh, you know, it came to me as a surprise because I was supposed to enter seminary that's, that year. And the Lord made it clear that it would come, but not yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Gabriel mentioned, tell, I remember him mentioning to me that, Brother, you will really enjoy being there. You will, you will find that uh, it's going to be a great place to be. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back and telling Brother Gabriel, yeah, it really was. It was an awesome place to be. Yes. And the people that I met and the friendships that I had made with them. Um, you know, wherever there is uh, the bad, there is the good too. Sure. And uh, there are many good people there. I remember sharing with some people uh, where I am in, in Ireland when they asked me when I visited different f people in Ireland, and they said, Limerick, yeah, it's a place that we just pass through. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> They don't want to stay too long. <laughs> no. And I was like, it should be a place where you would want to come and visit, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and stay a while. Yeah. Well, even the story of how uh, our superior, uh, the one at the time, we call him servant, by the way, but uh, just for those of you who are not familiar with the terminology of servant, uh, our superior at the time was Father Bernard. I know there's an interesting story, isn't there? The little dialogue yeah. that he had with the bishop? Yeah, you know? it was really, uh, one of the things that we, the people were really thrilled about when we first came there was that, you know, so many people were wanting to leave Limerick, you know, and people were, uh, trying to get a place outside of my Ross and trying to get out of my Ross and they were all surprised that we were coming in and we were going to set up camp right in the midst of it all and you know they're like we want to get out and you're coming in so <laughs> they're really thrilled about that and uh, I think the bishop was surprised to hear that we were willing to come as well he uh, the story goes that when Father Bernard our community servant as you mentioned got a telephone call uh, back in 2006 Six, I guess, in the fall. At five o'clock, which was just before we just went before there. we went over there. Mm -hmm. uh, five o'clock in the morning, B Father Bernard picks up the phone and, oh, hi, Bishop. You know, uh, good morning. And what's going on at five in the morning? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he said, Well, Father, I know you're discussing coming over to Ireland, but I just wanted to let you know there's been uh, an incident in my Ross that, you know, because of which, if you decide not to come, I'll totally understand. And what had happened, it was uh, quite tragic, but thanks be to God, um, it turned out well in the end and things kind of uh, worked out. But in the midst of the, the town, there was a lot of feuding, feuding mm -hmm. and carjacking and, you know, just random acts of violence. And unfortunately, one of the teenagers from the neighborhood um, just randomly decided to vandalize this car. He would set the, this car on fire uh, in the area of my Ross called Delmige Park. And unbeknownst to him, there was two children in the back seat of the car who ended up being badly burned and he was really remorseful 
uh, because of that and helped actually get the children out of the back seat of the car and it was all over the news you know look what look at where my Ross has sunk to now you know like this kind of violence children are being harmed now and it's just terrible and what a state you know and everybody was frightened more so to even go near the place yeah so the bishop wanted to uh, give us a heads up about that and said listen if you don't want to put your brothers in danger like this and put them subject them to this kind of violence then I'll totally understand don't feel obliged to respond to my invitation to come well uh, Father Bernard who was discerning between Derry city of Derry up in the north and Limerick at that moment knew that this was precisely the place where the brothers needed to be so he said Bishop we've decided you know we're coming to Limerick we want to be a, a source of peace and of renewal there in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important, isn't it? You know, we do a lot of work with the poor in terms of uh, food and uh, trying to shelters and, and that. But, you know, to bring peace. Huh? It was also St. Francis, right? He said, the Lord he gave me that greeting. May the Lord give you his peace. Huh? Yeah. So, well, that's a great, a great thing, isn't it? You know, and I know the people received you very... Uh, uh, what do you call it? very enthusiastic and what kind of what kind of friary did they have it was kind of an unusual wasn't it uh, the setup there uh, mm. would you want to yeah. say something yes yeah. father um, in the area there there are council housing yeah. uh, maybe council you can explain homes. a little bit just what that would be um, and it's 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 a place for families who are poor, poorer families who are in need of housing and so these homes would be combined usually there were four together in this one a complex, com complex. A row, yeah. in a row, right. And so you basically have four, four families next to each other. Well, the three were, uh, that we had ocu later occupied and were renovated um, were in really in bad shape. And so, um, you know, the city had helped renovate this particular uh, place for us, which basically made from three into one. And so, because we needed some office space and, and, a, and a guest room for some friend who would be coming or family. Mm -hmm. And then the kitchen, you know, rec, rec, refectory and the chapel. Chapel, right. You know, and then, then our um, enclosure, you know. So there are three areas there of the friary, and which worked out very nicely. It's, it is a really nice uh, way of putting our friary together. It felt like home for mm -hmm. me when I first arrived. Yeah. I just remember that feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. I know you, you had mentioned that the, the people were very, uh, very, very um, uh, rece warm and warm. receiving to That's you. Right. You know, That's were there right. any stories about the, those earliest uh, friars when they got there or anything? Yeah, that well, it, well, it was interesting. We're remembering um, before we had moved into our now our friary there, we were staying in this old rectory, which was much smaller than our friary now. So we're all crammed in there together. And uh, by the time we were ready to, when we were ready to move over to the council home, which was our friary, we had some volunteers helping us out and wanted to help us out in the neighborhood. And so they were clearing out all the garbage out of the old rectory and helping us move some of our stuff that we were moving over to the uh, friary. And the ladies are coming down and they've got these old ratty blankets in their arms. <laughs> And they're ready to throw them in the bin, and the and the brothers are like, "Wait, wh where are you going with that stuff?" He said, "Well, we're going to go throw it in the bed." He said, "Oh, don't do that. That's our beds. You're throwing." <laughs> <laughs> we sleep so, on on the, many of the young, especially yeah. the young brothers, sleep on the floor and uh, on a, on a, a blankets or a yeah. little yeah. mat or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they we didn't quite appreciate where we were coming from. <laughs> yeah, we were camping, especially early on, but uh, uh -huh. you know, we were trying to stave off. <laughs> I'm getting rid of the middle, little resources we had in the beginning, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very good, very yeah. good. Well, brothers, we, we don't have too much time left on this segment, and I don't want to get into something which I think is going to be very fascinating, and that was how did you begin your ministry. So we're going to take a little break now, but we'll be right back. So don't leave us because I'll tell you, the, the brothers have a great deal to share with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Welcome back to Sunday Night Prime. I'm Father Andrew Apostoli, your host for tonight's program, and uh, two of our very special guests here, two of my own confreres in the Franciscan Friars of Renewal, uh, Brother Gabriel Joseph and Brother Bernardino Maria. Well, brother, we've been talking about our going to My Ross. That's the title of our program tonight, The Monks of My Ross. And uh, you're looking at two of them here on, who are the guests for today's program. And they have uh, much to tell us about this wonderful mission. It, didn't, it wasn't very uh, exciting in the sense that it was spiritually developed, but there was development going on. It wasn't there physical development, but ours was a different development. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The... Um the city at the time was looking to kind of freshen up the neighborhood. There's been, there was so much vandalism and uh, very densely populated area looking to freshen it up. New roads in and out, new amenities, shopping center, police department, all kinds of, uh, they call it regeneration. They mm -hmm. wanted a physical regeneration of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now, our mission wanted to contribute, we wanted to contribute to that, supporting that regeneration, but for us, it was more of a spiritual regeneration, right. you know, with our minimal resources. And uh, it's hard to uh, play both on the maybe the political side and the religious side and try to, you know, people weren't always agreeing on the best way to regenerate the neighborhood, this road, that road, this amenity. So we were trying to advocate for everybody and trying to be a spiritual presence there to show that the deeper regeneration that was needed there was really the presence of Christ and uh, this new renewal of faith for the people who had lost so much hope in the in the decades prior yeah. to that. Yeah. Uh, you really brought uh, the gospel and the good news shall be preached right. to them. Uh, and then uh, I know that, um, uh, how, how did you go about uh, doing the first uh, experiences of the uh, apostolate there, you know? Um, share Brandy, you want to share some? Yeah. Well, um, just, to, just to begin with the fact that when we moved into our new friary, there was now um, the old rectory. Mm -hmm. And the old rectory, um, through the generosity and providence of God, really, mm -hmm. came about a, a means of apostolic outreach to the kids. Mm -hmm. Because that then became renovated through the funding of a very generous benefactor. And it na enabled us to think about what is it God, what is God asking us to do there at that time? And the biggest thing that we can say is our presence was a big thing there. Um, we needed to be present to the people and live with the people and among the people as Jesus did in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. And there we could begin with the kids who are most wounded and need affection and need love and need someone to play sports with and need somebody to give the, uh, uh, an account of the gospel to them. And uh, so we began uh, in this apostolic center, which we call John, John, Blessed John Paul II Center, and um, because we wanted to give them the gospel. Mm -hmm. And we were sharing earlier that the primary way that we would do this would be to introduce them to prayer, to introduce them to how to pray, and we would try to do it in, before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament mm. to bring them to Jesus, to bring them to Christ, to bless them, bring the children to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would do that in little ways. It was difficult. I remember in my own experience trying to work with the kids before the Blessed Sacrament and with the kids there mm -hmm. and recognizing that the attention span was just not quite there. So we would do, you know, we would have the we'd have the girls together and in the chapel while the boys were out playing and then I would try to give them a catechesis or another brother would be doing the same thing but in few in small increments of time you know mm -hmm. 10 15 10 minutes you know at most yeah. and uh, then they would go out and play and then the boys would come in or vice versa mm -hmm. so we were really trying to feed them with the with the gospel with stories of the saints um, and on particular feast days, we would tell them about the feast day or about Christmas for that matter. Mm -hmm. The Advent wreath, what is this all about? We'd give them ex we would try to tell them like as if they were receiving it in school too. Mm -hmm. um, but try to do it in a different setting, in a more relaxed setting, in a way that they would understand better and learn to pray. The rosary too, yeah. that was another thing. So little ways that we would try to 
reach out to the kids because in reaching out to the kids, we really can reach out to the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, so very important. Uh, um, did you do any of the uh, any uh, uh, ministry to the house, uh, going to the houses? Yeah. Was I that the... Uh, I think early on, too, like even before we could get the kids into the Apostolic Center, um, that was almost like step two for our work right. there. A lot of times they were visiting us, you know, before we even went out to visit the different houses. And... Uh, droves of young people wanted to come to the friary and we were just always pulled out of the friary to hang out in the street with the kids, kick a ball around. They were always asking us about the beard and the habit and, you know, it was just attached and they would pull on it, you know, and just testing us and all the rest of it, you know, and, but they loved us. They loved having us around and, you know, anytime a new friar would come, you know, they had the whole parade of young people coming up and, you know, want to meet the new monk, got to meet the new monk, brother, you know. So we had no rest for, and I, till this day, you know, we're kind of, we're so much right on the street, but I often tell it, you know, like as challenging as it was, you wouldn't want it to be any other way. It was just yeah. fantastic, you know, and mm -hmm. so it all developed really organically. We had no set plan what we were going to do, and, uh, but people just, just came, you know, so we were mm -hmm. often in the houses and. Yeah, doing a lot of the house visitation and uh -huh. knocking on doors, and mm -hmm. it was it was really fantastic because uh, the the neighborhood was somewhat chaotic. You know, we had mm -hmm. horses in the front lawns. These were all uh, from the <laughs> traveler culture. They're kind of the, oh, the travelers. travelers of yeah. Explain uh, that. Maybe yeah. some people are not familiar who the travelers are. Yeah. Well, it's inter the uh, you wouldn't think this, but in Ireland they're kind of like the gypsy culture, the gypsy people. And formerly, and still to this day, they have sometimes travelers that are still moving about in their caravans. But these would be called settled travelers. And a lot of them came into Myros and settled there in homes. And, but a big part of their culture was horses. And they weren't going to give up their horses. Even though they gave up traveling around, they didn't give up their horses. So mm -hmm. their horses were graving and grazing in their front yard, our front yard, the neighbor's <laughs> front yard, you know? <laughs> and so horses were all over the place. But... So despite all the kind of chaos that seemed to be around us, we would knock on the door and without missing a beat, come on in, brother, come on in, have a cup of tea or have a sandwich, you know, and come on in. And the hospi hospitality. Irish hospitality still reigned, you know, it was, they were really happy to have us. And none of these are churchgoers, you know, it wasn't like they were, uh, it was like evangelization 101, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of loving the people where they're at, knocking on the doors and sitting around mm -hmm. having a cup of tea, which was mm -hmm. challenging sometimes. They're strangers to us, we're strangers to them. That's right. But, you know, we took the first step. We tried to take the first step. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, very good. Well, I heard you had some funny experiences. I know you had one little, you're going to tell a little funny story about the catechetics. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, Father. Um, I wasn't there when this happened, but I remember this story of, uh, of, of two young little, well, two, two young kids coming by, knocking on the door and saying, brother, can we have some sweets? <laughs> That's, you know, and... Uh, now, these kids had a reputation, too. You know, they they were, did, they, they did. <laughs> but they were great, too, once you get to know them. But, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they, had some, they were a little rough around the edge, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, a brother said, okay, but... Uh, First, let's let's do a little bit of a little little game. See if you can answer this correctly. And uh, basically, the brother asked him, "Who put the animals on the ark?" And the brother immediately, without losing any time the, at the all, young boy, yeah. young boy says, "It wasn't me, brother. It wasn't me. It wasn't me, brother. No, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it, brother." <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you know, already on the defensive, you know, like. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, so it's like play, put, placing the finger on someone else, you know, because, you know, they would get into get, mischievous kind of behavior and, you know, they don't want to really... Because you used to get uh, blamed for stuff, you know. So, <laughs> you, you, funny. Yeah. you have these little incidences, you know, of really uh, funny, just precious moments and yeah. you, we laugh about it, you know. So you were really... Uh, you you were not uh, preaching to the uh, the choir. That's for exactly, sure. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. One hundred one. One hundred one. One hundred one. Basic. Now I know yeah. you had some rough moments there too. I know you told me a serious yeah. story there. Uh, maybe one of you might want to just share that one. That was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it's kind of uh, it's, you know it was a positive experience for sure, and it's always 
a beautiful thing to be with the people and love the people, but you know, sin and violence is a real danger. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's not a fun environment, and mm -hmm. yeah. it's very real. And one day, um, we had kind of brought it got brought into a um, situation on the street. A fight had broken out. Um, and the person was getting pummeled on the ground. There was a large group of people around, real kind of riotous and just not a, a good scene at all, you know, yeah. and really close to escalating further. And um, the person had a car nearby with children in it. And, you know, they were getting beat up in this, in this melee of people. And the friars ran out to see what was going on. And one of the original friars who was there uh, kind of took the initiative and stepped right into the middle of it and said, in the name of Jesus, stop what you're doing, you know, break up the violence and mm -hmm. kind of the shock of it and just kind of invoking, you know, the Lord's name in the midst of that violence, they all just kind of backed off and were like shocked and it just kind of stopped. And it, that break in the violence kind of gave the people, uh, gave the person who was getting, the, you know, pummeled there the chance to kind of jump in their get car out. and yeah. get out and... Uh, get to safety and uh, I guess it you know the people in my Ross despite the violence despite they're not going to church despite you know their maybe lack of faith in different ways underneath this underneath they were they were still you know the Catholic culture was just right there you know so they had a reverence for us they had a respect for us and uh, you know so they 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 recognized the Lord's name, they recognized the brothers, mm -hmm. and it kind of broke up the violence for them, you know. And, yeah, that yeah. probably saved somebody's life, or at least yeah, saved yeah. them from very serious uh, yeah. harm. Yeah. Sure, huh? sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as you said, there was, uh, there was a lot of violence, just like that car burning that you said happened even before you got there. Uh, but uh, you were bringing the gospel, you were bringing the message of God's love and peace and the love that we owe to one another. Yeah, huh? that's right. Yeah. I, know, I know the, the church there has, been, has experienced some difficult times lately and uh, the need for, you know, um, the gospel to be proclaimed again. You know, in every generation, that's why, you know, we've been called at this present time to the new evangelization. Huh? And uh, right. yeah. uh, I, I think from all you've been sharing, you're making me kind of excited. Um, maybe someday I'll get stationed there, who knows, over yeah. there in Ireland. And, uh, uh, but help to proclaim that gospel. As I said, the little experience I had, I went to about five cities, five different nights in a row, preaching in different churches, but I really, really enjoyed that uh, very yeah. much. So, well, you know, um, I, I know too that uh, you're talking about the, you had the monk biking in the city. What's that all about? Yeah. What was that? Huh? <laughs> well, this was before my time, but again, the brothers share the story, and it is something of a humorous story um, to uh, to have a brother biking in his habit, full habit, on a bicycle through the city, and uh, and just saying hello to everybody that he came in contact with. Mm -hmm. And it was his chosen mode of transportation, and he loved to do it. We need to get exercise, so that's that's very practical. But it also allows you to just be open to everybody and to receive everybody. And um, and he was very good. He had a real particular charism to reach out to people, and everybody remembered him, and everybody knew him by name. And every time a friar other than him was outside, they would come up to you and say, "Are you?" are you him? Are you this? And it's like, we're someone else, but we, there's a direct association there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and really what it hap what happened was people got to know the brothers through this one friar mm. and they, and relationships began to develop. And very importantly, trust began, began to develop. Uh -huh. And when there's woundedness, there is a need to be healed. And with that healing, needs, uh, what needs to take place is, uh, again, a, a development of trust. Mm -hmm. And that was very important because that led into other things that we were then able to do because now people were coming to us and meeting us where we lived mm -hmm. and meeting everybody else where they lived, you know. Then sure. we could do the uh, suggested, you know, coming into the youth program. That's and right. And the meetings. And once we had their trust, you know, and they trusted us and 
then we had a bearing and, and where we could go from here, you know, and that's when our youth program started and our summer camps and Wonderful. different things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know you were, you were kind of building a sense of community, a sense of unity among the people. That's well, right. brothers, we're going to have to take another break right now. Don't leave us. We'll be right back. We've got an awful lot more to share. to Sunday Night Prime. I'm Father Andrew Apostoli, your host for today's program. And along with me are our special guests. We have Brother Gabriel Joseph and Brother Bernardino Maria, who are my confreres, uh, fellow Franciscan friars of renewal. They are part of what are, we affectionately call the monks of My Ross. My Ross was our, uh, is our mission in Ireland in the city of Limerick. And the brothers have been sharing a great deal of what the friars did when they went there. You know, brother, I know there was some, uh, brothers, there was some high, uh, high profile events, uh, things that were making bigger impact. Could you share a little bit on that? Sure, Father. Um, in the very beginning, when we first arrived, uh, we were talking about how relationships began developing and people started coming to us and get to know us. And so um, certain brothers had a gift again to come up with a very uh, inspire it was a very inspired event to bring people again out in the open because with every kind of uh, feuding and everything people were f afraid to come out of their own doors and so the very first thing was Christmas the very first thing and in the year before that really there was not much of a Christmas so in, in fact there was no outward celebration of Christmas um, and so Christmas now, the nativity scene was very important as Francis brought the, the, the live nativity to the people. And so we were in the midst of a hurt people that needed Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, many people came to, to, to our help and uh, benefactors and so forth. And many of the children in, in were a part of this, adults and children. And so it was a nativity play. And in 2007, there was a huge... Uh, play there and it was more than 500 people present wow. and really it had an impact on people because again people were able to experience Christmas and what better way to do it than to start there because Christ comes into the world as a baby mm -hmm. vulnerable mm -hmm. and like us in every way mm -hmm. and so that was very important to the people there and uh, and to our brothers and again I wish I was present to that but the stories I've heard were just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They had uh, the the, uh, the culture there. I mentioned that they loved the horses. They loved all the animals, you know. So that was a big part of the uh, nativity play too. We had sheep from the country come in. <laughs> we had goats and uh, donkey there for Our Lady. And uh, accidentally, <laughs> unbeknownst to the brothers, one of the farmers instead of just bringing a regular old cow in brought a bull. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's made, something you want to yeah. to deal with. <laughs> so our uh, volunteer farmer who was there tending the animals, when he came upon the scene, he, he said, oh, look at the sheep, the goat, and then, <gasps> brother, you got a bull there, brother. <laughs> Don't tell me, we got the bull, I'm going to get the pen up. We're going to take care of this bull. <laughs> you know? But the bull and the donkey didn't get along, the bull and the goats. So we had a lot of like keeping the peace between the animals, oh, you know, my, oh, let, my. let alone the children that were running around and just, it was may mayhem and chaos. And, but hey, Our Lady and, you know, Joseph, Jesus came right into the midst of our chaos, you know, and yeah. it was a real delightful yeah. scene. And they had the news media there, the, the military showed up. Uh, not to keep the peace, but to uh, set up tents to serve soup for the people. And a lot of different community uh, service groups came in and different people that brother had met on his bike trips into town said, yeah, why don't you come on in and help us with the nativity play, you know? Not really connected to yeah. putting on a nativity play, but just uh -huh. to get involved and yeah. 
to uh young people in my Ross and, mm -hmm. and communicate all that, yeah. Right, bringing uh, the, really uh, the peace of Christ. And, you know, you mentioned before, Brother Bernardino, about uh, St. Francis and remember his celebrating Christmas, mm -hmm. how important that was yeah. for the people to see that Christ, you know, he emptied himself, St. Paul said in his letter to the Philippians, he emptied himself of his glory as the Son of God and be, humbled himself to become man mm -hmm. and uh, his birth. It always enthralled St. Francis. He always felt that was the greatest feast of the yeah. church mm. because he said it contains all the others True. right there. Mm. So that was wonderful. Huh? What a grace came to, through that uh, Christmas nativity. Indeed, yeah. you know. And uh, I, I know that um, you, you mentioned also there was uh, the Passion. Yeah. Was there the, the Passion yeah. play? Mm -hmm. I think it kind of just all mushroomed from the uh, yeah. nativity play, the momentum. And uh, one of the brothers was particularly... Uh, the, you know, he was involved in theater and different media things. So he said, let's make a big passion play. Let's put on a big passion play and we'll do it through the streets of my Ross. So he recruited our young people on horseback, mm -hmm. you know, to be the Roman legion that was, you know, Should, coming yeah. into the city and uh, various guys from the neighborhood was, you know, Pontius Pilate or St. Joseph and uh, they all had the costumes and everything else. And and the, uh, the children accompanied, and all the people accompanied this procession from one end of the city to the other uh, when the crucifixion scene that ended in front of the, uh, the friary. And it was, remembering now, they had, uh, as the young people were following, Jesus was, you know, getting beat by the soldiers, and the children were like shocked, like, stop doing that, You're, you can't do that to our Lord, you can't, get, stop doing that. You know, he was, they were like trying to defend the Lord along the way because they were like, <laughs> <laughs> it can't be, you know, which was fantastic. That was like, it was evangelizing them, you know, along the sure. way. You know, sure. and... Uh, Getting them to realize what the Lord suffered. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. exactly. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, you know, I, those kinds of things are such great tools when it comes to evangelization, especially with sure. the young people. Mm. It sure. really makes a deep impression. I know you also had, weren't you dealing with some clubs with the people there too, you mentioned, yeah. uh, you know? Uh, some after school, I think, some yeah. at night. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was, um, you know, the kids would come back from school and so they needed a place to come and, and basically the parents would bring their kids to the after school club and uh, again that's, as I mentioned earlier, uh, introducing the kids to pray and not just to, to play because they do that and they, they're in school, but to really try to introduce them to Christ through prayer and so forth. Mm -hmm. And um, and it really was a, really a source of grace for all of us um, in different ways. You know, I have to grow in patience. The kids have to grow in other ways. So it really allowed me to to kind of understand. Okay, try different things. See where they're at. Sometimes even showing them a clip of a movie to bring them into a certain truth and teaching them about morality and mm -hmm. teaching them how to just a little random acts of kindness that we can give to our parents and to be to listen to you really to learn to listen and respect one another and that was a big thing we needed to learn to respect one another and really try to uh, you know uh, see what we can do with the little that we have and uh, and all of us were talented in different ways so we were introducing different ways of trying to reach out to the kids mm -hmm. um, even through games and stuff. Yeah. 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 What about um, the, uh, it was very important that um, this, you know, affecting these young people. Did you find any of them who seemed to be, let's say, uh, kind of a little more gifted, like very good students, very, very deeply moved to want to be involved in the the, the mission of the church. Uh, did oh, yes. you start to form uh, future possible leaders? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I remember, and, and Brother Gabriel can fill in even more, but I remember particularly um, among some of the girls that were there, who I remember one, one girl telling me, Brother, I used to be like that. And I was like, 
and meaning that, you know, I wasn't listening. I wanted to do my thing, but somehow the Lord touched her heart. And in doing that, she became a leader. Mm -hmm. She really became a leader. And there's another girl who was very gifted in art. And I was always trying to encourage her to use her gift to reach out to the kids because they love to draw, they love to do this, a lot of arts and crafts and everything. And to really use that gift mm -hmm. and let the kids enjoy themselves, but teach them something. Mm -hmm. So both of them became really strong leaders. And there is mm -hmm. other girls too that have leadership quality and really became volunteers now. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned, people coming from the outside in, we actually had young adults coming from different areas to help out with the kids. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Mm. I was going to mention, Father, too, that one of the, uh, one of the leaders, who just, she just finished, actually, a year in, in Scotland in a house of prayer and mission, a retreat mm -hmm. house there that is kind of a center for uh, another apostolate called Mary's Meals. Um, and they do, um, they help with food programs in third world countries for children there. But anyway, her mission there was just uh, to do hospitality and to pray. And but she came from my Ross, and she was like one tough cookie. And she'll tell you, you know, <laughs> she'll tell you. Uh -huh. She was, you know, to talk about rough around the edges, you know, she, you know, rough. Uh -huh. We'll just you, you, we can fill in the blanks, you know. It was just, but the Lord kind of through forgiveness and she at you know she offered forgiveness and and encountered the Lord in in prayer slowly 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 chipping away and then something ch turned you know something changed in her and I would love for her to tell the story if she could fill it out in the details she did but from a distance and knowing her and others wow you know she mm -hmm. had this this girl is herself uh, more herself and more confident and more in love with God and just really doing a great thing in the church. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's great. I, you know, yeah. I think some of those tough people can become real leaders because they'll have the, exactly. the uh, strength, the courage to yeah. take a leadership role. You know, yeah. a lot of people, if they're too timid, you know, uh, especially when they believe in what they're doing. If they get they get touched that deeply in their hearts. This is something I believe. This is something I want to live, and this is something I want, you know, other people to learn about. Just as, uh, like, uh, like the girl, uh, some one of you had quoted, and she said, "I used to be like that," or yeah. that was that That's was right. me. Yeah. You know, when they can see that kind of difference, it means they've come a long distance. Oh yeah. Because they no longer see themselves in that situation. They feel, you know, they must know they're being called, huh? Yeah. Well, it's wonderful, you know. Then the Blessed Sacrament, huh? Mm. You had a great apostolate there yeah. with that. Yeah, and we mentioned with the kids, but also we were starting to reach out to the adults as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, First Fridays would be adoration at, at the parish, and we would announce it to everybody. We'd, you know, there'd be like a a sign up in my Ross and outside of my Ross as you're coming in that there is um, Holy Hour, Eucharistic Holy Hour uh, for First Friday. And you know, among the Irish people, they have a great devotion to the Sacred Heart. And they really mm -hmm. love the Lord and, and His Sacred Heart. And so it really became a, a doorway f to adoration. And so people would be coming, and a few, but they would come from the area and outside the area of Myros. And, uh, you know, we would have, as we would do normally, the, the healing service and everything mm -hmm. coming up to touch the hem of the Lord and with the Blessed Sacrament and the monstrance and just touching the hem of the, of the veil of the Lord and uh, asking for healing. And powerful things would happen. Mm -hmm. Even the kids from, from their after-school program would come and I remember a, f a story of younger kids coming. And, you know, there have been moments, little problematic moments, uh, moments during the adoration. So we had to be careful and everything. Sure. But they sat there quietly and at least received what was given to them for a little while and then walked out and were respectful at that moment. Mm -hmm. So God was doing something. Sure. And uh, so it was introduced in that way too. Uh, not just in the after-school program, but also at the parish and trying them, trying to get them back to the parish mm -hmm. and come back to church. That's wonderful. Yeah. 
Well, that's the renewal of the church, isn't it? You know, and I know that Ireland has been working toward that. And uh, I know that after the Holy Father, Pope Benedict had uh, addressed some of the issues or concerns that he had, you know, it's so important to rebuild the church. Uh, it wasn't that the call of St. Francis. That's right. So, you know, it's right in our blood, I think, as Franciscans. Francis, go and rebuild my church, which, as you see, is falling into ruin. I know you had told a little story about a young girl who uh, wanted to pray with the brothers. And did that lead to that summer camp? Or uh, is Tim here, you know? Yeah, I think that was kind of out of the, uh, we were uh, at some point along the way, we got inspired to pray the rosary more regularly with the children. You oh, know? Did you? It was just okay. kind of things would pop up and we would mm -hmm. go for it, you know, and mm -hmm. one of the children wanted to pray the rosary with us. And this would happen periodically, you know, pray the rosary, brother, we'll pray the rosary. Sure. You know, so we had a little mm -hmm. grotto next door and it became a regular thing. Every night after school, wow. all the children would come together and we'd pray the rosary together. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, we would recruit the adults or they wanted to come over to the friary and we'd pray the rosary there. And yeah. But the summer camp, mm -hmm. let me say yeah. a little more about the summer camp. Um, Talk about organized chaos, you know. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> let's get 60 kids, you know, from yeah, the uh -huh. neighborhood, and uh, yeah. let's see what we can do, you know. Right, right. And really, the whole thing, I think, in the end, we kind of lay out the best we can give, you know, the best kind of programming, you know, the times for prayer. You know, we're not super talented all together, figuring the best thing out all the time. But we were just trying to build relationships with these kids, and they kind of inherited from us maybe the faith that we had, you know, and it just mm -hmm. kind of catches fire, and some people catch it and it grows. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we're planting seeds, you don't see the growth. Um, sometimes we were fortunate to see the growth. But so this camp was all about just throwing seeds out there, throwing seeds and getting the young children to come around mm -hmm. and uh, spend time with us playing games, being out in the Mm -hmm. sopping wet fields on yeah. scavenger hunts. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really something because I remember just a quick story of a, of a and this is a precious moment for me when we did this uh, scavenger hunt because it was totally, we were all drenched. We were sopping wet. And I remember the scene, the last part of the scavenger hunt and Father Charles is on top of the hill and he's ready to pack things in and ready to go down the hill because it was so wet. And as we're all coming in, all three cars came in at the same time and everybody ran out the door, started to mar uh, march up the hill and run up the hill with their flags and everything. And I remember myself really getting into it and it's wet. <laughs> and we get to the top and then, okay, we find their treasure and everything. And as we're coming down, everybody's ready to go in. And here I hear a voice, brother, brother help me and I'm like looking <laughs> and it's like a, this little five-year-old almost six-year-old little boy walking through the bog and in the swamp and he's like up to his waist and he's like reaching out you know coming through it he's and he's not complaining mm -hmm. he's enjoying it and he actually left his shoes in the car he was supposed to use you know <laughs> and he's like coming out and he gets in the and I help him out we get in the van and as he's as we get back to the apostolic center his dad comes and picks him up and his words were, that was awesome. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, I said, it's all worth it yeah, you know, when you have right. a precious moment like You're that. You're not going to forget that. Well, brother, we want to cover a few more things here, too. You know, you, you then your experience moved beyond the neighborhood, didn't it? Huh? Yeah. Some, what are some of the activities there you were involved well, with? Well, um, we got invited around the whole country. We were invited to do missions throughout the country, every mm -hmm. corner of the diocese. We were in places that people from the neighborhood or people in the county hadn't been, you know, so unusual travelers in Ireland, you know, to be mm -hmm. so far abroad throughout the country. Um, so parish missions, school visits. Um, we got scooped up into the pro-life movement that was catching, uh, getting some steam there in the country with more and more bigger and bigger push for abortion in the country, which is sad, just isn't really it? sad and, you know, really infuriating in some ways because in the state of the, where the faith is so poor, you know, and just kind of shaking, the faith is still there, but it's, you know, with the scandals and, um, you know, the terrible things that happened there, there's a real healing that's needed. There's a weakness. Yeah. If you're going to introduce abortion into that situation, terrible. You know, yeah. we're going to sink. 
We have to ask our viewers to pray, pray very hard for absolutely, Ireland absolutely, to preserve yeah. its pro-life stance. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. and there's a lot of lot of young people again, you know, in Ireland rising up to really protest any more, yeah. you know, advance of the pro uh, pro-choice people that are really pushing for abortion. So we were marching mm -hmm. in Dublin and um, being present. There's a post-abortive healing retreats that are offered there too, because a lot of times women are going to England for abortions and really offering that gift of mercy and forgiveness to the women there. And the brothers mm -hmm. were part of that too, you know, yeah. that there's hope even after abortion, but yeah. uh, the Irish are still holding and please God they will, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So yeah, well I know you got involved at U2000, didn't you, over there, right. and, uh, but a lot of good has come, huh? And uh, uh, we hope and pray, please pray for the mission there in, in my Ross. Let's say a little prayer now. Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless your people, especially there in my Ross in Ireland, and the whole church there for renewal, and your church throughout the world. And bless all those as missionaries who proclaim the gospel of your Son. We ask all these blessings in his holy name. And I bless each and every one of you who are watching this program, and I ask your prayers, especially for the church there in Ireland. I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God give you His peace. Amen. Amen. Well, we come to that part of the program now where we make our little appeal for funds to help support uh, the wonderful work of EWTN. You know, um, the uh, uh, station, the, the, you know, the work of Mother Angelica and the work that continues through EWTN is just a real voice that needs to be heard, huh? Uh, we were talking about renewing the church there, in my Ross and in Ireland and so on. The church throughout the world needs that renewal. And so we hope and pray that through the instrumentality of EWTN, the TV, the shortwave and everything, radio, and all that the communications they're into can help spread that gospel message. So please be part of that. Be a missionary in your own way. Be as supportive as you can you know, with uh, EWTN. His mother always said, you know, put your donation and make it as generous as possible. And I bless you all. God bless you, Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.